We are back over here in our Newton project, and the last couple weeks have been extremely busy, and what you see around us is our plaster. Here in Massachusetts, we install blue board and a veneer coat plaster. What that means is you guys are installing a half inch jib, very similar to drywall. Then they're doing a scratch coat, which goes over a fiber mesh tape over the joints, and then we're doing a solid veneer coat over the entire surface. This is a big stage for us. It means all the mechanicals and the electrical and plumbing, everything has passed inspection. We got our insulation and we are ready to roll into finishes. Now, one thing with plaster is it has to cure. It has to totally cure before we can prime it. And it's important that we prime it before we install trim because it does exert moisture and we do not want to be installing unfinished poplar or unfinished backs of cabinets against raw plaster because that moisture could actually cause grain raising through our finishes. And we don't want to shut the job down for a week, so we used this time to meet with the guys over at Zone 6, and we did air sealing. They were here for two days getting this place airtight. I'm gonna kick it back a few days, when Mike was on site with them, and they're gonna talk a little bit about why we took this approach on this house. Hey guys, we're at our Newton renovation and today we're installing Aero Barrier. We have Nate from Zone 6 Energy. We have a old house in Newton from the 1930s. It's a structural brick house. There's two layers of brick. If you insulate it, you're gonna trap moisture in the wall and you can actually hurt the overall performance of this house. Not being able to install insulation, that's kind of why we started looking into Aero Barrier. If we air seal it, then we should be able to create a more comfortable house. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, anytime the air is leaking out, that's a whole lot of your heated air just going yeah. through the roof or out yeah. the windows or out the walls, wherever or it be. So. Vice versa, it will have cold air coming in, you'll yeah. feel drafty and uncomfortable. Yeah, if the house is really tight, and of course it's got to be ventilated well, which you guys understand, but if it's really tight, you can get away with a little bit less R value because you're not losing any heat to convection. So all of your heat is staying right where it needs to be. Your air isn't just leaking out the sides, as, as it were. You mind just giving us a little description of what Aero Barrier is and what we're doing today? Absolutely. So Aero Barrier is a method for air sealing a house, and essentially what we're doing is with the blower door, pressurizing the entire space to 100 pascals, so it's busting out, leaking at every leak point. And then we're spraying an aerosolized acrylic caulking into a mist in the air, getting it nice and thick in there. And then wherever the air is leaking out of the leak points, the caulking is going to follow, congeal at the edges, seal up at the seams. And we're reading the air changes on the computer as we go. The blower door is keeping track of it all. And then when we get to your target, which is under one ACH 50 in this case, we hit stop and clean up. That's the idea. We did a benchmark test. We were both thinking we were going to be somewhere in the double digits. Right. We're like, you know, 12. 10, 12, yeah. something like that. And surprisingly, we were down at between six and seven, right? Yeah. About six and a half ACH 50, which speaks a lot to the building practices that are going on. Um, but that's kind of like, that's your target to start air sealing, right? Between six and eight, depending. We could maybe start at nine or 10, depending on the size of the building. But yeah, if we can so start out at a six or eight ACH 50, then we're ready to go with Aero Barrier and we can take it down sub one after that. So anything above that, you kind of, you got to go back, do a little more homework. We're going to find seal it up. find the bigger leaks. Yeah, if yeah. it's over nine or 10 ACH, there are going to be some big ones. We like to keep them all half an inch or smaller because a big leak like that is still going to seal, but it's going to take a long time to build in on the edges. There's going to be a whole bunch of material going out through the hole. So. so is that what we can seal up to? You can seal up to it like a half an inch hole? We say up to a half inch. Technically, it'll seal any size, but you know, it would take, I don't know, a day of spraying to build in the edges of a two foot hole. But half an inch can be sealed up within an hour, hour and a half usually. Crazy. They got this house from a 6.8 ACH. Now, ACH is air changes per hour. Uh, down to a 1.93. It's a drastic and a, and a tremendous improvement, especially being that this house is number one so large, but also so old. Now, I was I had this goal of being sub one. I, I sat, I talked to Sean over at Zone Six and said, "Listen, can we get this sub one?" And I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to approach the rest of this home with some old school um, methods. And what I mean by that is maybe finding areas that we can tighten up whether it's back caulking you know, prior to you know, boarding the garage or, or portions of that, or just double checking that all our penetrations are totally sealed. One thing I really want to shed light on was above me here. I'm standing in the master bedroom. 
um, and what you're looking at is these blue lines on the ceiling. And what that is actually a chalk line. These guys do this veneer coat on the plaster uh, and when they get to a certain point, they actually take their chalk line and snap it into the plaster. And what that allows them to do is work their trowel to a true line. Um, it's really important, especially when in a room like this where you have a wall to a roof line to a ceiling and we don't have any trim to cover up that transition. When we paint this, you know, say it's a dark color with a light colored ceiling, we want that line to be really crisp. Uh, and it starts with the plaster. You know, the, the painter can use a tape line, but you know, it's kind of one of those things the framer should, you know, prep for the plaster and the plaster should prep for the paint. Um, so I really applaud the, the way they, they go about their, you know, their job. Um, but I want to jump back into the master bathroom here. Uh, you can see that we have our Dietra down. This is the Hexagon one. If you guys are familiar with this product, this one is designed for heat. It is pretty traditional, almost all of our projects, we do the Dietra heat. It's a small upcharge in a project like this, and it's much nicer. It's not so much about heating the space, it's about keeping the floor warm, you know, closer to body temperature, so it's comfortable on your bare feet. In the last episode, we talked about how we dropped the subfloor down and prep this for a shower pan. What we're using is a fortified mud. What you're gonna do is you're actually gonna mix a slurry mix of thin set first, and then build this mud pan down. It goes from zero and it pitches up. And right here, it's about an inch buildup with our three quarter inch subfloor. And we also actually added a, a quarter inch um, of additional subfloor on top before the Dietra. The Dietra stops here, but we're actually gonna continue it when this is all dry into the shower, right up to the drain. And we're gonna situate this so that the tile is actually heated in the shower. Stay tuned for a future episode. We are gonna walk through all the details on these curbless showers. Um, we get a lot of questions on them how we you know, work with the heat in the shower, how we're dealing with steam in the shower, um, how we're dealing with a low pitch to a linear drain against the wall. We're gonna walk you through all of that, including the recessed glass track, and then this tricky detail up here, um, windows in a steam shower, and what practices we're gonna take to help prevent any possible issues that we might run into long-term. So stay tuned for the future episode. We'll see you guys there.